Oh, I'm so tight. Moving that good, huh? Yep. Or you just feel sugary. <laughs> we watched Good Will Hunting last night. You watched Good Will Hunting? Yeah. Yeah? Forgot all about like all the I little haven't seen it yet. You still haven't seen that? Got Matt Damon, right? Matt Damon, Ben Affleck. Yeah, that's okay. Is that the Robin one about Williams. the uh, handicapped uh, janitor? Handicapped? <laughs> What is that one? Where he's like autistic or something? No, he's just like, and like he's really good at math. He's like a polymath, and then he's just a genius, but uh, doesn't live up to his full potential. Basically, it's the chance he the old story. <laughs> what was it that sparked the desire to watch it? Mm -hmm. Just revisiting like the classic ones, and then as. Like you mature and you grow over time. Like you go back and you watch stuff that you did before, and so you see it through a yeah. whole different lens. Yeah. And like, like it gets to one part, and like as a like a teenager, I'm like, this is dumb. <laughs> yeah. Do that? And then like this time, I'm like, shut <laughs> up. And even nobody's in the house. I'm like, y'all leave me alone already. <laughs> I haven't I haven't vacuumed in like a week. <laughs> super dusty. Somebody bring a cat in here. <laughs> I'm I've went two horror movies in a row. There were huge letdowns. Like a couple of weeks ago, somebody told me to watch uh, Late Night with the Devil. So it's uh, like yeah. a, it's like a 1970s late night talk show that gets you know possessed or whatever. There's not good. And then uh, there was one called a, nature, a Killing in Nature or something like that. And like they were talking about how at the premiere people were like leaving, throwing up because it was so gruesome. And I was like, okay, all right. Terrifier. I know, it's, yeah, similar to that. And, and it, the, the preview looked good. It was just like this dude, like, walking through the woods, killing people. And then I, it was not great. <laughs> because the movie was entirely just him walking through the woods. <laughs> Here's one that I've always found really intriguing. That somebody writes this. I know. Somebody thinks that up. Somebody's thinking about this whole process. Yeah, I know. And then how many people choose to digest that? Right. And enjoy it. And enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not, like, a lot of it's not over the fear anymore. Yeah, it's, it's over fear. the shock factor. I'm like, I oh, so. my God. I think that's what it is. I don't get scared of scary movies anymore. I love them. That's, that's the other one. To me. This one's always intriguing me, and I'm guilty, too. Why do so many people like real crime stories? I don't know. I don't know. Why are so many people drawn to serial killers right. and so many people drawn to murder? Right. Consistently. Yeah. I mean, those like, are the most popular Netflix shows. Right. Time. Why it? Like, that seems like the oddest thing. Why we all go to this intrigue over. I feel like it's almost. Death and murder. Honestly, I feel like it's almost the same as why so many people like gangster rap music. It's like you can live that the fantasy story without being actually in So it. weird. Like, and then the, the. Like, how many people now do you think are like drawn to the idea of murder themselves, like, but you, I guarantee you it's probably a high percentage that it's contemplated it. killing someone. Yeah. And I think about if there's no consequences, <laughs> people would go batshit yeah. crazy. I don't think I could, though. Have, like, even no consequence or anything, I don't know if I could ever murder somebody. It oh, would yeah. have to be, <laughs> it would have to be a revenge type thing towards somebody close to me. Otherwise, I wouldn't. Kids, family. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's not, you know. Self-defense, maybe. I, mean, I would, yeah, I would defend weird. myself if it's not. Yeah, that's that's not active. Like yeah. That one matches. Yeah. A rabid deer <laughs> knocks down your door. <laughs> and yeah, self-defense, I'm going to kill it. <laughs> okay. Self-defense, yeah. Fuck that deer. Yeah, for self-defense, <laughs> fuck anything. But, like, I'm saying, like, just, like, I'm going to murder somebody or I'm going to go hunting. Like, if I get to choose the person, the person. <laughs> With like that no. deer, that deer didn't do anything wrong. No, but it's delicious. <laughs> That's what it did wrong. <laughs> yeah, but you go to Kroger and get some. <laughs> yeah, but then you look at this economy that you're living in. <laughs> What's the cost of a bullet right, in comparison yeah, yeah. to a uh, ground beef? You're right. The idea of who you truly are, what yourself is, yeah. you'll never truly be yourself. Like yeah. I, 
through four, correct? Without any ability yeah, you're to make twice. a decision. Yeah. You're set into a set of circumstances mm -hmm. that automatically predefine who you're going to be. You're set in a certain yeah, your environment, you're set in a certain your parents, parents here, whatever. you're set in a certain genetic mm -hmm. makeup yeah. that predetermine exactly who you are. You don't get a choice in any of that determination of who yourself is. Right. Now, granted, now everything goes off of that why. Now yeah. you get to start making your own decisions to yeah. structure who you are. But your true idea of self is never fully yours. Well, that's what I think the whole process of spirituality, if you want to call it that, is. Is to, it's not a path, it's not an addition, it's a subtraction. So you're trying to, to basically tear off those pieces that you were conditioned with to find your blank slate as a, I guess to me the whole process is like, okay, I like oranges because I grew up eating oranges. Do I actually like orange? You know, then you start to kind of break away those patterns and then like actually sit down and just eat an orange and be like, oh, this tastes like shit. <laughs> <laughs> if in um, avenues and situations that are going to kind of entice you to like, like a, I've never tried water skiing because I didn't have a boat as a kid and my parents didn't take me on the lake. So. You know, I'm I'm not gonna have the same opportunity to like water skiing as somebody that grew up on the lake. But you know, I can retry it as an adult from a, a point of no judgment. But that. you have to get to that point of no judgment. Yeah, they aren't ready for that anyway. Do you think that no matter what, you are who you are? Like, like you're predestined to be the personality that you have? You're predestined to your personality and there's no... <clears throat> you're predestined to your personality and there's no room for change? Or you that your end destination is already set? Right. I feel like the infinite amount of choices you can make within a single second nullifies the idea that something's predetermined. Because mm. the amount of probability for anything was so astronomically high that mm. your end point is, is unfeasibly there. Mm. Like if there's a million different things that could happen in a given moment, Coincidence or cause and effect? Coincidence. Like, like that whatever happens sometimes just happens randomly. That random events yeah. can happen? Sure. Do you? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Like, I agree. I don't think the end point is determined. But I, I believe, like, our souls have a predestined set of accomplishments to achieve, if you want to call it that. Lessons to learn, whatever you want to... And so things that happen in your life are by design by test to give you the opportunities to So you believe that there's learn that. ethereal universal tests that are set to be on your plate? You wanna call it a test. Like I and again I don't I think I agree, I think there's an infinite number of opportunities that could occur. Uh but I think specific ones happen for us to choose or not choose to progress. And if you, if said thing happens and you choose not to attack it, progress it, progress it, whatever, it'll continue to happen in other ways. Oh, sure. I pull it after. Yeah. yeah, that happens yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of us go through that moment of like you have to hit the wall enough times for you to go, oh, that wall hurts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. And then. At a certain point, you get that decision to make. Do you find a way to go through the wall, dig under the wall, or do you say, never mind, I don't want to hit the wall again? Yeah. So it just depends on what. I think you gotta just, you, you, you have to the point where you which address it. For wanting to go through it is the more important point. Yeah. But I think that's the, that's why I think the reason is beyond us. Like, that's the. That's your set line. Yeah. That's the progression of the soul is to, and I don't think it's, I think as humans, we want to try to go over and under and through 
And the reality is if you awaken or open your eyes to it, you find that there's a door right there. <laughs> and then you just walk through it. I don't know if there's a door because the... You even said that it's a growth process for right. So is it a growth process of you being able to get rid of the haze that's covering the door? Right. Something yeah. has to happen that's for what, that Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's the, it's, you become aware and... Like a light bulb a, moment. Yeah, and you have a new insight and a new viewpoint that is like, oh, that's a door, not a... <laughs> so potato chips. <laughs> and I always feel like we can at least challenge thought in mm. each other. Yeah. Whether it's something either one of us digests, but that that lives in each other. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That was yeah. appreciate value. Yeah, and then I go home and write my journal about how much I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you I might compare journals one day? <laughs> we should, it would just be hate journals. It would be like a poetry slam. <laughs> so, yeah, gratefulness yeah. Is, is, is something that I don't think gets shared enough either, mm -hmm. is actually showing gratitude for what you have. And yeah. I think with ingratitude, it's hard for fear or negative thoughts to exist if you're truly grateful for what you have, which goes back to kind of what you were saying, is if you're comfortable within yourself, and if everything that you come to is not determined by exterminating factor, and those external things are just bonuses, yeah. being grateful for those bonuses without tethering to fear of losing those bonuses right. is a step to getting to your true self is gratefulness, is gratefulness to God's joy. And within that, you can gracefully fuck yourself. <laughs> no, but for real, like if you feel, if you, like I feel like in, in any type of relationship, friendship, romantic, whatever, if you feel like there's something specific you're getting out of it, then you're not really in tune with it. Or you can enjoy what you get out of it, but I feel like the reason more so, this is why I've been lately, is like, because I truly just enjoy your, like, being around you. Right. Like, I don't, you know, as our friendship, like, I don't need you to do anything specific for me. Like, that's just being yourself. <laughs> but what if you throw, is love just the pinnacle feeling behind that? Like, okay, so you've been around somebody so much enjoy being around them that obviously love and emotion that develops around that situation. I think that's, I think, is that like, true, I've, I've, I've come to a point where I think true love is the, in, in any sense, like I think that's beyond romance is true love in general. Oh yeah, I totally agree. Is, the, is that, that, that you just enjoy the presence of someone and there isn't something contractual about it sure. versus uh, contractual I think that's the societal high romanticism of love. Like yeah. I love them because they make me feel good about myself. You know, or I love them because they give me these things or whatever. To truly love is independent of the relationship right. itself. Yeah. So, I mean, if you truly have a true love for that person, you're obviously gonna be able to detach that thing that's the ultimate form. Yeah. Just when you become fully attached, dependent on need that, that thing, right. you need it. Mm -hmm. So it's that external thing that you're talking about that you need versus right. just an appreciation. And then that person is, is if, then if that person does not provide that need, then you're like, yeah, then you get pissed off. You. I don't love you, whatever, in reality, like, that should never be. I mean, obviously you can make people mad that you actually love or whatever, and vice versa, and you can get things from people. that's but that's back to you. independent from the that's actual not connecting to your true self if right. you're getting upset over those external things. Right, right. Yeah. Let me just go circle. We'll come back.